Hi, welcome to another studio demo and today I'm going to show you how I painted this oil painting. It's done using an alla prima technique which is just all in one sitting and it's nice and quick and it gives a lovely fresh feel to the paintings. And um, at the end of the video I'll show you all the tools and lotions and potions and paints that I used. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. So the painting process starts with a light wash of acrylic paint. Different people have different preferences of what colour they use, but I quite like to use raw umber or burnt umber. And they give a nice um, neutral background with a slightly warm feel. So after I've got the canvas covered, I pull away some of the lightest lights with a piece of kitchen paper. Uh, which can be dipped in water to make it um, lift the paint off even more. And then once that's done, I start to build up the shapes of the figure. Looking for the big shapes, it's kind of partly line drawing and partly blocking in large areas of dark and pulling out the lights until I'm happy with the basic balance of the painting. So once I'm happy with the basic lights and darks of the painting being planned out, I start to mix up the medium. This is liquid, it kind of helps it run smoothly and it also helps it dry. This is oil, which gives the paint a nice kind of gloss and again helps with the way it goes onto the canvas. It also slows the drying process, so the two kind of slightly cancel each other out. And then this is, I use zest it, it's just a paint thinner basically, and um, it stops the paint being too gloopy, especially on those early layers. So you can mix this, uh, it's called a medium, you can mix it up in advance and store it for a couple of days, or just do what I do and mix it on demand. So now it's time to mix up the colours and I use four colours on cadmium red which is a lovely warm colour, yellow ochre, I use yellow ochre light, um, again that gives a bit of chroma and um, ivory black which functions as a bit of a blue, this is known as a zorn palette so it's a cooling colour and also it darkens and then titanium white does the opposite, that lightens the mixes. And those four are basically enough to mix a convincing flesh. So the remainder of the painting process is just a question of starting with the darkest darks and massing in at a general level what you can see. If you squint your eyes you can look for areas of dark that perhaps aren't so obvious when you first look at the reference photo. But I always try and keep a sense of the whole picture and that's why it's very useful having the acrylic underpainting as a guide. So as I go along I use the four different colours to pick out warm areas, cool areas, lights and darks and just build up the painting, try not to blend too much. There's nothing magic to it, an individual thing how you lay the paint on and how much variance you do from the reference photo and what it is about the picture that has really caught your attention, the things you really want to draw the viewer's attention to when they're looking at your picture. So here's the final picture on my easel and you can see the palette laid up with all the different colours of paint that have ended up being mixed in the process. This probably took a total of about two hours and here's the final painting. Um, you can see the detailed brushwork and then if I zoom out you'll be able to see, I hope, how it all comes together. So it's really not designed to be seen very close up, it's designed to be looked at from a distance so you get that impression of the light flooding onto the front of the figure and the power and strength of the arms and legs.
So thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting and inspiring for you. And um, as promised, here is a summary of the materials that I used. So for the underpainting, it was done in acrylic. I use Liquitex acrylic and a synthetic wide soft brush. This is uh, Proline by Pro Arte, um, diluted with water. And then for the rest of the painting, I use oil paints. Um, in this case, I used four colours, which is known as a Zorn palette. Um, so I used a titanium white, which is Robertson & Co. That's the big one, because I get through a lot of it. Um, Wallace Seymour um, yellow ochre light. And then two uh, Winsor & Newton colours. One is cadmium red and the other is ivory black. And for the oil paints, I use generally um, hogs bristle brushes and sometimes synthetic, really just whatever comes into my hand. Uh, gen the main thing is they're pretty stiff and um, they hold a fair bit of paint. And um, I tend to have at least three on the go, one for dark, one for light and one for kind of mid-tones, um, sometimes more. And that's diluted with something called medium and different people use different sort of mixtures. Um, you can just use liquid, so I usually have a fair bit of liquid in it. That's a Winsor & Newton product. And then I use um, cold pressed linseed oil, but different people use different things. Um, again, only well, I just use a splash of that. And then a fair old quantity of paint thinner. So I use something called Zestit, which smells quite orangey. And talking of smell, beware of ventilation. So it's always important to have good ventilation when you're doing oil painting. And then for palette, I use a wooden palette, but sometimes I use the tear off disposable ones. They're brilliant if you hate clearing up like I do. And then the actual um, base of the painting is a gallery wrapped box canvas. This one is by Loxley. Um, you can get them in any art supply shop and you can, if you like, you can paint the sides. So there you go, um, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please share it and um, subscribe and give me your comments. I'm really interested in what you'd like to see next and what you thought of this.